Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And I'm here for another frequently asked question and that is, how do I put up nuts and seeds for long term? So right here I have a jar of cashews, here is a jar of pecans, here's a jar of hazelnuts, and a jar of organic whole almonds. I have some more here I'm gonna show you. But all these nuts here were vacuum sealed sometime last year to early this year, 2020. So I started these ones in 2019. Now I've been vacuum sealing nuts and seeds into jars for quite a number of years now. In fact, I have right here some hemp seed that I put up. I didn't put a date on here, but yes, I used a Tatler lid on this one. Uh, same time that I did these sunflower seeds. Now these were in 2014, so I'm pretty sure these were the same time. Now the sunflower seeds have gotten a little bit stale, as I mentioned in another video where I was talking about vacuum sealing with Tatler lids. However, one thing I recently remembered was these particular sunflower seeds, because they were raw anyway, they always had somewhat of a stale texture to them anyway, so it might not have anything to do with how old they are, which is another reason why we didn't work through them that fast, because um, Patrick is the big sunflower seed eater, and they just they just weren't the best, really. He, he prefers them roasted. But then um, here's some hemp seed. I know I put these up at the same time, and they're still good. So I did check the ones in here just now, because guess what? This particular one came unsealed. That tends to be a problem with the Tatler lids is they're not as likely to stay sealed. However, one thing to remember is these ones were vacuum sealed with the machine. I've always had more failures with anything that I vacuum sealed using the Food Saver machine than I did using the brake bleeder pump even though it was a wide mouth. Wide mouth usually holds their seals better than the regular mouth when it comes to, especially when it comes to using the machine. Now, this method of vacuum sealing nuts and seeds into jars is only going to be useful for some. Now, I've had sliced almonds like these vacuum sealed into jars since 2014. I have since worked through all those. These particular ones are from 2019. But even when I got to them, they were still, the ones that were from 2014, they were still good. They were several years old when I finally worked through them. And, uh, and that was after freezing them for a while and then wanting to make space in my freezer. That was the same thing with the hemp seed. But and taking all the nuts and seeds out and then vacuum sealing them into jars after they had a couple of days to air out and make sure they were dry. And they've been good all that time. So that is one method. However, one thing I've learned from experience is that Brazil nuts, like I have in here, and I'll explain this cloth in a minute, need to be frozen. I did a video on how I freeze things in jars that I'll link to down below. And I did try vacuum sealing things and then freezing them. And what I found is there was, there's been no difference in how good the stuff turns out, whether I vacuum seal it beforehand or not. So it's really not worth the time and hassle vacuum sealing stuff before you put it in your freezer. And like with this one, I had vacuum sealed it and it lost its seal anyway. Same thing with the macadamia nuts. These I also freeze. Uh, I vacuum sealed this and it, it didn't it didn't stay. So it doesn't matter. They still turn out just as good. And that goes with just about anything else I've frozen. It might get frosty looking, but I have yet to have anything that I've frozen, fruits, vegetables, nuts, or anything that has ended up getting freezer burnt in the jars. Now, another question I get quite a bit, well, because there is a jar shortage, is can I use Mylar or Food Saver bags? Yes, you can, and I did do a video on that, and I will be doing an update video soon on Mylar bags because for the same reason, even though I have a lot of jars and our local town has managed to keep their jars pretty well stocked, unlike other places, I don't know why, and for a decent price, <laughs> uh, we have been stocking up on more jars, but, the nice thing about Mylar is it does allow for more space and you don't have to worry about breakage and it is naturally it naturally keeps the things inside less exposed to light. So Mylar is a great option if you want to go with that. I do recommend if you're going to use Mylar bags that you do add the oxygen absorber unless you have a really good way that you can vacuum seal your things into Mylar bags without having to use the O2. But um, anyway, I have some bags. They should be here tomorrow and, because I've got some things I'm going to 
switch from putting into jars into the mylar bags so i'll be talking about that when that in that video so it'll probably be up within a week or so of this particular one so be watching for it a lot of people believe that you can't store fatty foods vacuum sealed into jars but yes you can it just really depends on what it is now as i said with experience i found with the brazil nuts for some reason i have had some of those that i vacuum sealed into jars go rancid but uh last year i bought a whole bunch of hazelnuts and they've all been vacuum sealed into jars and here is the one where is it here's one i'm currently working through and i didn't bother vacuum sealing it again after I started working through it for making my one of my favorite milks, which is the hazel and Brazil nut milk. And yes, I have a video on that too. I have lots of videos on how to make your own nut milks. So if you're vegan or you just need to be dairy free, I have lots of videos. So I'll put that playlist down below for the different nut milk videos. So anyway, I just tasted some of these and they've been sitting in this jar for months open like this, uh, you know, unsealed and they're still good. They don't taste any different than the day I stuck them in there. And so you have to keep in mind raw nuts are going to always have a more what we think of as stale if you're used to eating nuts that are roasted. If you're not sure should you freeze or not freeze, try taking like a half pint jar or even a quarter pint jar, vacuum seal some different nuts into different ones and try setting them on a shelf for several months and then go back and test them and see. And you will learn which ones will do well on with your shelf life. I have found most to do well. I didn't take a chance with the macadamia nuts. I just assumed because they're one of the fattiest ones that they might be the ones to be more like the Brazil nuts to be more apt to go rancid. So I just went right to freezing them. So that's why this jar looks wet or a little bit frosty. And here with the cloth, normally what I do is I wrap my jars in some just old flannel sheets that I get at garage sales and tear them up. You can use old socks if you have socks that are big enough to slip over your jars. Bubble wrap would be another option that you could put around the jars. That's just because when your jars are going in the freezer, they're going to be more fragile once they freeze and if you've got them stacked next to each other and they're in a place where they might get moved around like maybe on one of those like our chest freezer has those movable shelves that's a mistake I made with some of mine was I had them I had some frozen goat milk that we used to get from a friend in there and moving the things around caused the jars to smack against each other and I lost about three quarts of raw goat's milk doing that I was so angry with myself so that's what taught me to start wrapping them and things like this now if you're putting them in a place where they're not going to get slammed around you don't have to wrap them but it does add that extra layer that helps uh you know like if you lose let's say your power goes out or whatever and that's just going to add an, a protective layer to help keep them really cold and insulated that way so it's just another added protection just depends on where you're going to store them i have a picture right here i'll show where i have heavy whipping cream and uh some turkey broth that I didn't feel like canning. I don't usually get enough broth at a time, that I, especially in the winter time when I'm cooking turkey. I don't usually like to can that time of the year. So typically what I do is I freeze the broth into jars and then wrap them and then stick them in the freezer like that. Remember to check out that video because when you're freezing liquids like broth and cream, what I do is a little bit different than what I'm gonna do with something that's loose like this. You definitely do want, don't wanna be vacuum sealing liquids into your jar because that liquid's going to expand and crack your jar so i do have a special method again remember to check out that video i'll have linked in the description box below look for the show more that will be right down below my youtube channel name right over here or that little gray arrow slash triangle you'll see right over here if you're on a smart device that'll open up the description box so you can see all the video links and other links i'll be putting down below i do have a whole playlist on the many faqs i've been covering lately so i'll be sure to link that playlist down below as well and for those who are new and you've never seen this method yes i know the uh, canning, these uh, tops have been hard to find, but I did do a video on that too. And it's just about keep looking, don't give up. Keep checking back at the same places like Amazon or foodsaver.com because they do keep going back in stock. The problem is they keep selling out. It's just like my skirts. I cannot keep my skirts up on the store. People go to my store and say, I, I never see your skirts. Well, that's because pretty much as soon as I list one, they sell out and it's just me making them. I don't have a factory here. It's just me. So anyway, let me go ahead and show you if you do happen to get a hold of the tops, 
uh, how to vacuum seal using the brake bleeder. Yes, you can use your machine. Another question I get about the, I've been getting a lot lately about the brake bleeder pump is people want the to know where you buy the hose and the tip. Well, it comes with the kit. I will link to one of them down below. If that one goes out of stock, just look for something similar. Because I used to have a link I put in there all the time and suddenly that, that one was gone and so I put another one, that one was gone, so I kind of gave up. So if I put the link and you go to it's gone, just look for brake bleeder kit and find something that looks similar. It'll, it'll come with the hose, it'll come with different tips. The difference is the tips that go with the brake bleeder pump do not snap into the food saver top. You have to actually press and hold it into place when you're using it. While you can, with some of these hoses, you can take the food saver hose and jam it inside. That has the tip that actually snaps into there. I tried that and it doesn't work with this one because this hose is a little bit too big. There's just too much air it tries to pull through. So anyway, if you're using this tip, you just press and hold it in there. Just pump the brake bleeder up until it's the needle stops moving. I found that to be the best because if you go by the number of pumps there's going to be some that will need more than others it may be working for you uh, on a regular basis to just count how many pumps you're doing but I found some things need a lot more than others especially if you're resealing a jar like I'm doing here that's partially empty so this is having to go up quite a ways okay now it's finally not moving and there we go so now this is resealed now normally i do not reseal my jars of nuts and other things when i'm working through them and that is because usually i'm working through the nuts fast enough that it's not an issue but honestly uh these hazelnuts right here i kind of forgot about them because i haven't been making my nut milk lately i'll be getting back into it soon i i go through spurts with it like anything else and so they've been back there for months unsealed and still good so yes there's a lot of things that you don't have to vacuum seal it's just recommended to extend that shelf life but there are things i think should be vacuum sealed no matter what lots of, a lot of your fruits should be vacuum sealed because they will definitely go stale they still go stale over time but your fruits your vegetables things like that i highly recommend you vacuum seal those if you don't want them to get stale uh, a lot of your herbs and stuff can handle not being vacuum sealed. You can just put them in a jar with a tight fitting lid if you, you know, especially if you can't vacuum seal. So yes, this has been a very useful method for me. Again, you may want to freeze some. Uh, a lot of your seeds, a lot of seeds do not need to be frozen. Hemp hearts are probably one of the fattier ones that you might want to freeze, but again, they've worked great for me without freezing. So anyway, just uh, give it a try and see how it works for you. And yes, Use the Mylar bags if you can get a hold of those. And, that, and uh, don't forget those oxygen absorbers when you're doing that. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.